Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I am Rajni Khan and today's video will discuss lesson 4 challenges of microservices. Okay, so already I have lesson 1, 2 and 3. I will give those links in the description section. You can watch those videos as well. Okay, so before proceeding to today's video, if you have not subscribed my channel yet, please do subscribe it immediately and hit the bell icon to get all the notifications from my side, right? So this is my channel. If you see, uh, so here the three videos are there that are related to microservices, throw throws, final, finally finalize, and lot of other videos, JSON series, IntelliJ idea with Git, and uh, Kafka, Kafka consumer producer, Java ID videos, lot of other videos are also here. If you want, you can explore those videos as well. Okay, so let's start today's topic. So the challenges of microservices, right? So while developing uh, a microservices architecture, what are the different kind of challenges we'll face? Okay, so first is configuration management. Okay, for example, if you'll see here, microservices 1, microservices 2, and we do have 3 microservices, microservices 3. And in each microservices, different, different configurations will be there, right? In properties file, different, different configurations will be there. And multiple configurations will be the for, for each microservices environment specific suppose for dev different uh, uh, configuration for QA different configuration for prod again different configurations for each microservices different different configurations will be there for each environment specific things okay uh, so for example if you have multiple microservices for say 20 microservices okay so how difficult it to manage those configurations if you want to change something go to that microservices and change those properties or change those configurations right so this is it's pretty difficult if you have a bunch of microservices to manage those configurations it's very difficult okay then coming into next scaling and distributing that load for example here three microservices are there in microservices 2 we are getting lots of requests okay so you want to scale that microservice microservices m2 for this m2 service we want to scale up that one so we will deploy these microservices in multiple nodes or multiple uh, what do you say uh, multiple mm, tomcat instances or uh, that one right so these microservices have multiple instances or we have scaling that in scaling that microservices so that time if you are calling from m1 microservices m1 to m2 so that time how it will load balance so which which instance it will call right so that is a, again uh, a problem or challenges right that is a, again a challenge how you will call uh, from microservices m1 to m2 because m2 how m2 have lots of instances again some load balancing how will balance that load right again that is a problem then coming into problem 3 is a visibility right so lot of microservices are there and they have deployed so how to uh, monitor those monitor those microservices if something is up or down how to monitor that one and uh, if you are calling from microservices 1 to microservices 2 and from microservices 2 to microservices 3 then how those logs will propagate not propagate how will identify those logs right so the same request for the same request how to store those logs how to identify those logs across those microservices the same request in m1 and m2 and m3 how to identify a particular request flow in across those microservices right logging and monitoring again that is a problem 
right ne next coming into fourth one it's fault tolerance okay from microservices one you are calling microservices two for example microservices two is down for some reason okay then how will handle that one right how will handle that fault tolerance right so it should not propagate that errors completely uh, backward right so how will handle that one again that is a problem or uh, then implementing inter process communication based on either messaging or rpc right so if you are calling from m1 to m2 so how or what are the different approaches we need to call from one microservices to another microservices that is one thing and the next one difficult to difficult to handle distributed transactions suppose uh, m1 is uh, in m1 and m2 uh, this m1 have uh, his own database and m2 have his own database and i want to manage that distributed transaction then how will achieve that one again that is a problem then coming into last one implementing changes that span multiple services suppose you are changing something in m1 then that's required to change in m2 as well if in that case again it's a challenging thing right because uh, one changes one changes uh, that span multiple services if you are changing one thing then it's required to change in other services right so if that is the case then how will uh, do those things right so these are the different kind of challenges we'll face while developing microservices okay so have you got a crystal clear picture so in the next lecture we're gonna see how to mitigate these challenges right so how we'll uh, mitigate these challenges and what are the different kind of solutions are there to mitigate these challenges it's really interesting so uh let's see in the uh next lecture okay so thank you for watching and if you have not subscribed my channel yet please do subscribe do subscribe it immediately and have your valuable comments in the comment section and i'll really appreciate your comments okay so thank you for watching